kissed. What do you think? We have to be close to You have to pretend like you like me. <coughs> Whatever. Uh, go ahead. Do an intro. No intro? I got you coffee. Should be awake. I mean, it is like 3 o'clock. Shut up. <laughs> What's going on, guys? So, uh, we're not actually out working, mowing, anything like that on other people's properties. We're working on our own today. A couple projects around the house. And what I'm going to show you guys today is uh, I've got to rearrange my trailer. So, the BR800 has been sitting on the floor, just flopping around. And I don't like that. I like to take care of my equipment a little bit. So my uh, weed eaters are horizontal. I need to kind of get them vertical. And uh, I'm going to move one of the handheld blowers to the back above the BR800. So when we have the tailgate open, you can just grab a handheld or the backpack. I like that. Right. Yeah. Because every yard we go to, we drop the gate. Uh, my trailer, the way it is, I can't really work out the side door with the 21. It just doesn't work. And there is no room in the front for the 21 because with the Dixon and the Skag both in there, it is from the front wall to the gate. So I don't know what this footage is going to turn out like because there's not a lot of room in a 6x12 trailer and trying to record, but we'll put something together, right? Absolutely. What are you going to do? Nothing. Right. That sounds about right. What about the chicken coop? We need to unload that. I tied a towel. I know, but we need to unload that. Okay. We also need to get the fence piece over to your dad and move all the wood in the back and put the fireplace in the back and put two rigs in the house. Oh. You want me to go on? That's a lot. Can I not do that today? You're the one in charge. What time is it? It's like done. I don't know. I'm not in charge. What are you talking about? Oh, and clamp chowder. All right, guys, well, stay tuned and uh, see what we can do for some footage. Working in the trailer. Hey, if you don't want to see work in the trailer, move on. But, uh, yeah, because we're not... move on. Well, we're not doing yard work. People want to see mowing and edging and trimming. People want to see you. No, it's you they want to see. It's you, that cute little bald head. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, let's go. Get to work. All right, so what we're going to try to do today is, uh, if you notice that the uh, steel BR-800, I just been having it sit here on the floor, and it's fallen over, and I needed to get a mount for it. So the problem is, is my weed eaters here, when I'm doing horizontal, uh, I'm almost to the door, and I just there's just not enough room right here to hang the BR. So I'm going to hang the weed eaters vertical, and uh, these little hooks serve the purpose. You can see I've got, yeah, I see right there, right there. They serve the purpose for the weed eaters, and they're only like three dollars or two of them or something. But uh, I went to the box store and got some different stuff. So let's see what we can do here. Do you know how hard it is to film in a six by 12 trailer with two mowers in it? Oh my gosh. For Christmas, I want like a seven by 14. These are just held on with self-tapping screws because I have these metal rails. And really, I can't complain. I mean, these things have done a great job for cheap hooks. And I will use these for something else. Okay, so here's my problem, and I don't know how much you guys are going to pick up because there's only six feet here, but when I set that weed eater down on the ground, there's not enough room. I actually hit the ceiling, so I'm thinking about doing something like this, so I can hang them here, and then the bottom can just rest on the ground. I can put one here, and I can put one here, and still not be in the doorway. And then that leaves me this rail here to hang the BR on. Okay, right. went to the box store and picked up a couple of these. So I think these will work. There we go. I think we can do something like that. Oh, let's see here. Let's get a weed eater out. See something like that? 
that would work. Would it? I'd stick out a little further than I wanted, but man, that gives you some room, though. I like it. The bottom just rests there. It's not going to fall off. I do that now. Just like that. I like it. You know what else I could do? I could take one of these down here, one of these hooks, and put it down here for something to sit on. So I could do that. I might just do that, and then it'll stay right there, and it won't come off. What I don't want is the carburetor down, because then it floods out and that plugs up your car or your air, your air filter. It plugs up your air filter. That two-stroke oil stays in your air filter, and a uh, little bit of dust, and it plugs right up. All right, let's try the other one. All right, let's see if we can get the second one on here now. Just do it like an old farmer. Tighten her down till she strips and back her off quarter turn to be perfect. Okay. And then that one would go thereabouts. But I can get them off without hitting the sand. That's what I was worried about. Okay. We can do that. I'm wondering if we can go about like that. That would be a big help because then I get my mower underneath of it if I could do it like that. I might just think about doing that. All I know is that gives me a lot more wall room, and that's what I needed for that BR800. A lot more wall room. So the BR800 I wanted to put towards the back just because it's so big and bulky it's hard to get to it. But I needed to have it up high enough that I can get the 21 underneath of it because my 21 just barely fits right underneath there and I'm uh, I'm installing all this equipment with the uh, with the two mowers in here there's not a lot of space that way I can see everything when I'm putting it together but I think a tube if we lean it up against this little stub wall right here and I just hang that thing about like that I don't know if I can get my 21 in there or not? I know I can get it in there. I don't know if I can get it in there with a handle. Man, this is so hard to film, guys, in this little trailer. Anyways, you can see what I did here is I bought another little hook. And it was just the right length for the BR to hang on. Because these BRs, you don't hang by the handle. They hang off this little thing in the back. Right here. They hang off right there. So. hole no less. Okay, now I don't have to sit there and hold it. That's as close as I can get. Gosh, I wish I could go up more, but the nozzle here just doesn't won't go up any further. Let me take a look at it. Well, it's hanging there. Sure sticks out a mile. So sure I like that. I need a wider trailer, a longer trailer, and a taller trailer.
Not sure I like that, but it might be my only choice. Because there's just nowhere else to put anything in here. It is what it is. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. You know, I guess, uh, I guess perhaps if uh, I bought some real racks, it would probably help. But this is what we got. So that's what we got for now. Let's see if we can show you guys just how tight of a fit this is. So there's the nose of the exit up against the front wall, right? Then you have the skag butted up against the Dixon and you can see how it's enclosed around there see how it's butted up right there and here's the this is the latch that the clamshaft sits on and so that's the Dixon butted up against it or the skag butted up against the Dixon and I have uh, that much room what, maybe six inches from the back of the skag to the, the door and then wide, width-wise, the, you can see clear up there, the deck of the Dixon is nearly touching the exterior wall. The deck of the Skag isn't quite doing that, but I usually have the Skag over just so I can get past this right here when I pull it. And then I have this much room over here, which I have to fit a 21-inch mower in. So let me, uh, let me scratch my head here a bit and make sure this is all going to work. <sighs> what a pain in the butt. All right, I think we finally got the right combination here. So let me show you what I've done. Get out of the side. So I've got the two eaters and the bottoms up here going hooks down there. Let's see if I can show you. See the hook? See, that holds it. That one I had to do a hook with an extension because the curve shaft sticks out a mile. But anyways, and then I took one of the 2520s and I mounted it back here because we always drop the deck at every yard and you used to have to crawl up front to get at the handheld leaf blower if you didn't want to use the backpack. So I mounted, I mounted that one there. There's the BR800, the two eaters, and the 21. Now I'm going to show you how I get the 21 out of here. Okay, so let me show you how I get the 21 out of here now. You have to grab the handle. Push it underneath the BR, roll it back, and then you can wheel it out. And the put it in, it's the opposite. Push it down. Hand your hand. Now, that's a pain in the butt. But that's my only recourse. I, I don't have any other way to do it. I can't mount the BR up higher, and the weed eaters have to go there. I mean, I suppose I could put one weed eater across the top there and one across the top there, but keep the mowers off to this side. Yes, that's what we come up with now. Um, you know, considering I've got a, let's say about $30 in, uh, in hooks to, to uh, put all this stuff up, it's not too bad. Although I wish I did have some nice racks. There you go, guys. We are mounted mm, diagonal, vertical diagonal. And the uh, move to handheld back here because we do use that quite a bit rather than the BR. And the BR is sitting there. And you can see the BR's nozzle just goes right up against this, this little stud wall. And that's it. Everything's in. done.